Now we're going to move on to the H5 block. And I have directional fabric on this one, so I've got my little arrows on my pieces, and I made sure that I made, made them go the same direction, and I've laid out the general assembly of my block. Now, this assembly, I'm going to make up these into the triangles, um, and then add these, and then do the borders, because that seems to make the most logical sense to me. So I'll be making up these and then attaching them to this, which will give me a center block. And then I will attach these sides and then I'll make these all connect in a row. Same thing with the top. And then I will connect those rows to the center part. Okay, so now it's time to baste my triangles. And like all my other triangles, I start with the hypotenuse facing to my left and I start with this first leg and I baste this side down and then I baste this side down. I have to pick it up to get a good fold and then I baste this side down. And you're going to have tags that hit each other but this way, um, if you have any that do in a spiral pattern or whatever, this way it's always the same thing. So, to hang on to my triangle. So then I fold it on one end, and then I fold it on the other end. Because that's where the fabric is the thickest. And then I just push down the middle. And that's how I get my triangles. And I will do this for every triangle in this piece which is a lot of triangles. So here's another observation about the arrows for the smaller triangles and when I, I put them towards the edge here. Once you baste them you're hiding your arrows so I try to baste my directional triangles as I need them. So this piece is going to end up being this middle um, triangle section like this because this one goes up because this one is for this section down here. So this one will go down. So once I'm ready to assemble this is then when I base this. This way you don't have as much confusion as you go forward. So I got both of my triangles pieced and I have um, my other two triangles basted. And so once they're all together they will form my middle. Here's my middle bits. And to refer back to the book, we are going to have this goes here, and this, and all of these fabrics are in the correct direction. So I'm going to make my middle, and then I have, I'll be ready to put the outside bits together. Now, just like other seams that I've done here, I have started in this corner and sewn up to this point. And then I started at the other corner and met it in the middle. And I always do this when I'm attaching um, one piece to multiple pieces or multiple pieces to multiple pieces. The only time I don't do this is when I attach one big piece to another big piece. Like when I did these two pieces, I just did it across. So whenever I'm doing something that has multiple pieces on either side or both, I start at one end. And then I come back and I finish it. And this way you know that your ends are exactly where they need to be. Alright, so right now I'm working on the last, the main seam here that goes from corner to corner. And I wanted to point something out. I've got three seams here that intersect. i got this seam here, this seam here, and then this seam here. And when I start from the one end, I want to go past the first seam. So I went past this so I can pull it together and then tie off right there. And then I'll go back and start and go all the way to the end. What that does is it actually strengthens it because you've got three pivot points in this seam. And so if you go, if you take it past that first mark, then you'll have a better time of evening it up as you go. I use this with my sashings and my cornerstones because if I'm putting sashings on my blocks that have little bits in the corners I want to make sure that I go past that first seam because otherwise 
it for some reason it puckers up. So if you get that first seam stabilized, then it's a lot easier to do. All right, so I've added my bars to the other side of my square, and it was just single piece to single piece, so I made one big seam. And so then the next part is to make these little triangles into squares and then attach them to this part. So I'm gonna base these as they go. So like this one goes here because that's the direction, so on and so forth. So I'll be able to get those and make these into squares and then attach these into rows and then attach these rows to this part. Okay, so I got my bits together here for the corners and then I'm going to attach them to my rectangle and then I take my row that I formed and I just taped this in two spots to my main center piece and I will attach it again working from one end past this seam and then starting from the other and working my way back to where I tied off. Now that I've attached my rows to my top and my bottom, I have a complete H5 block. 